this is the patch notes and they are out so patch 3.4.0 we are getting new runeterra patches will this be the patch that saves the game let us get into it okay so we can cover the new cards here for those of you guys who haven't seen them desert duel give an enemy minus two this round an ally and that enemy strike each other so basically it's a streamer card they now have access to you know being able to remove things at slow speed it's not amazing but it will actually see play in some niche decks uh like udir Akshan, uh Siver decks if they're using demacia they have single combat instead but streamer actually needed a tool like this a little bit on the weaker end but it's all right celestial wonder five mana Targon, fast, stun two enemies. This one's actually not bad. Um, th this one is probably going to be the strongest of the three. It's not even that bad in Yasuo decks. And it will be actually really good in Targon's low decks. Like, this card could actually be kind of scary if Targon goes into more of a controlled direction. And the last one is Rocket Barrage. Five mana, PNZ, deal three to an enemy and one to all other enemies. This one's going to be a little bit on the weekend. I, I, don't, I don't think this one's really going to be uh, that much that much played but basically these spells are just trying to shore up the weaknesses of these regions they're giving them things they didn't have access to all right let's get into the actual changes aphelios isn't changing directly uh but apparently the moon weapons are getting changed gifts from beyond is going to two cost and all <laughs> are you kidding all moon weapons all moon weapons are going from three cost to two cost holy shit. no way Wait, wait, let's, let's read what Krishanam does first. Let's read, read what Krishanam does first. It changes from summon a two-cost follower from your deck if it has knife, activate it. Now it summons a two-cost follower from your regions. So it doesn't pull from your, yeah, okay. It doesn't pull from your deck anymore. Okay, this is actually a really, really big change. So Aphelios was kind of broken for a lot of Crescendo mechanics in the past. Aphelios decks were running stuff like Box to Puss um, to be able to abuse Crescendo. And this also has implications for Eye of the Dragon. This is actually an Eye of the Dragon nerf indirectly you can't pull eye of the dragon in yasuo deck uh yasuo in lee sin decks anymore for free which is actually a really really big deal crescendum like you no longer can just get gifts from beyond into that uh aphelios is getting giga buffed like he's back to he's back to three health his moon weapons are back down to two that's a little scary azir goes from level up requirement goes from you summon 13 plus units to you've summoned 13 plus units or landmarks so I, I guess he's a little bit easier to level up now pretty pretty small all things considered but definitely makes him a little bit less awkward in in some of the like mono shrima style decks that were kind of struggling to level him up uh it's gonna be a bit of bit more copium that i'm willing to have to, to talk about mono stream in that way but you know it's a good change overall small but good nar okay uh loses one attack so basically what we expected from nar this one makes sense, you know, it's a pretty, pretty standard NAR change. Pantheon goes down one attack also. Um, this, I, I, I think I like this change. Th th this feels like exactly what should have happened with Pantheon. Pantheon was a little on the strong end. Um, I like, like, for example, I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about NAR. Like, I, I don't think this is a perfect change. I would have liked a, one of a couple other things to be done. Like, NAR still feels pretty strong, but he's all right now at least. Pantheon feels like he was a really well-rounded champion. I was a big fan of Pantheon, but minus one attack is kind of a perfect change for him. Pike, <laughs> Pike also loses one attack. Wait, they're just minus one attacking all of these champions. <laughs> Pike does minus one attack. Um, you guys are saying this does nothing to Pike? Really? I think this is a pretty big nerf. This, it nerfs, it nerfs death from below a noticeable amount and Pike's level up. Pike's level up actually, I mean, when it happens, it usually barely happens and now it's going to be harder. I think, I, I, I think it's a noticeable nerf. Rumble has gotten changed to from I've dealt plus 12 damage to I've seen allied mecha yordles deal plus. Okay, this is this is kind of sweet. So he actually has a reason to be run with other mecha yordles now. Um, it looks like mecha yordles are getting buffed. All right. So Lil Dipper is getting plus one attack. Dune Hopper mech is getting plus one attack. Trumpet Tecker is getting plus one attack. Salty Spinner is getting plus one health. And Fury Horn Crasher is getting plus one health. Honestly, I think this is actually not bad. Like, I think, I think that these cards. So, something that's big here is I, I think these cards were a little closer to seeing play than people gave them credit for. And now you actually have a real reason to run them with Rumble. This is cool. I, I, I do generally like this. Rumble always felt really weird with Mecha Yordles because he didn't really have a reason to run Mecha Yordles, right? I mean, when he leveled up, he, he had a bit of synergy with Mecha Yordles. But for the most part, 
Rumble and Mecha Yordles were kind of two different things, and his synergy with them was pretty minor. Now Mecha Yordles are helping level him up, and that's nice. Right? Rumble's level up when it happens early is kind of a big deal. This, uh, I don't know. <laughs> It might surprise some of us. It might surprise some of us. Okay, okay. Victor, hex core upgrade now costs zero. Holy! Sh it actually did it. It actually just costs zero, even without Victor being leveled up. Always. I think. I think this change is actually kind of big. I think this is a pretty big buff. So look, listen. Victor was seen as a meme card for a while. He was. He's been buffed a couple times. You know, now he's 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 a two four, and his hex core upgrade costs zero. He's level up is a little bit easier i think that it was at the very release i think that when it comes to cards like victor and ballistic bot these cards seem decent at first but the one mana you pay every time just added up so much now that this costs zero i think that's huge i honestly think that victor is like very legitimate all of a sudden okay and that's the end of the champions no udir buff <laughs> uh no udir buff sag oh. <laughs> uh, that's that's pretty funny that's pretty funny then we've got Xersai Dunebreaker. As with Pike, we're toning down Xersai Dunebreaker to help out other decks. So basically, they're just, you know, they're another small nerf to lurk, minus one health on that. Perfectly fine. I don't think there's anything crazy happening here. I kind of like lurk as an archetype. This is apparently this is a raging hot take of mine. A lot of people don't like lurk. I like lurk. I think it's well designed. Yeah, I'm fine with them nerfing it in a couple small ways, I guess. Sure. I mean, I don't I don't think this really changes much. Twisted Catalyzer goes to a 2-2. Two -two. All right, that's pretty big, all things considered. I mean, Darkness is a powerful deck, you know. Darkness won't really change. Don't get me wrong, you're still running Twisted Catalyzer, but th th this is a card that Darkness is always trying to get in their opening hand, and you definitely might have a few awkward exchanges. Yeah, pretty minor. Vanguard Sergeant goes back to being a 3-3. Three -three. All right, I will say, regarding Vanguard Sergeant, this card was one, it was a card that, I don't know if they ever needed to buff in the first place. It used to be a 3-3, so they, they did revert this change. He's back to a 3-3. Um, at like This card was good even when it was a 3-3, by the way. It was very underrated. It was very underrated. And now Vanguard Sergeant is back to being 3-3. I think it's still going to be very playable. Um, definitely not like the three of in a lot of the decks that it has been seen in. But I like this nerf. Demacia was definitely a bit overtuned, and Sergeant will still be a very playable card. All right. Okay, Conkologist gets nerfed to a 2-1. So, yeah, I mean, it's still going to be a really valuable card. I think a lot of people were saying they would have liked for it to change, like, its manifest pool. I would have been down if they if they changed its manifest pool to, like, spells that cost two or less or something like that. But, yeah, Conkologist 2-1, sure, it's a little bit more in line. Loping Telescope costs three, though, and it goes to a 2. Okay, so they switched stats. Loping Telescope is now a 2-2, two -two, and Conkologist is now a 2-1. And, yeah, t Telescope costing three, though, is a blow. I will say, like, for Conkologist... It costs two, so, I mean, one health is, any deck running Conkologist is still pretty much going to run it. It's just a really good card still. Loping Telescope, though, at three mana, that's huge. Like, this card will, I mean, you're not going to, you're not going to run this in a lot of decks anymore. I don't think you can run it in Yordles and Arms at three mana, but you can probably still run it in Bandal Tree. Paddle Star. Goes from deal four to an enemy that attacked this round or is stunned to deal five to an... Okay, so Paddle Star, yeah, it just deals five instead of deal four. You're not going to main deck this card, but it's part of Zoe's champion spell. So I guess it's a little bit of a buff to Zoe. I, I mean, sure, why not? Quicksand, change... It goes from give an enemy minus four, minus zero, and disable its keywords. Okay, so you can split your Quicksand, basically. You can use it on either one... Okay. Wait, 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 that's kind of interesting. You can use it on one enemy or you can use it on two enemies and give them each minus two and it disables both of their positive keywords. Okay, that's kind of big. Wait, that's sort of huge. And this card becomes like an actual card so fast. Okay, so you have the ability. Whoa, whoa this, is, this is insane. This is, this is a huge change. I think Quicksand goes from being like a borderline unplayable. It, like it was very fringe. Quicksand is suddenly a good card all of a sudden. Like... This is like a this is like Shurima's new combat trick. You can swing two combat exchanges kind of like a troll chant all of a sudden. It's a huge counter to elusives because you can disable two elusives and block them both. You can still minus four on one enemy and disabling, yeah, being able to split being able to split this is so big. Bono Shurima, let's go. I mean, this is your this is your buff too. They got a new card. They got they got the new Desert's duel or whatever. All right. She who wanders. Goes from obliterate all followers with four or less power and play in hands to obliterate all units with. 
<laughs> so she's back to being able to obliterate champions. All right, this this, <laughs> should, this this one doesn't change anything. It's yeah, yeah. She's she's still a ten mana follower. All right, Sheriff Lariat Rose gets plus one plus one. Okay, sure. You know she gives she gives everything vulnerable. This card this card was always a little bit cute. She's kind of chunky now. Seven six is sort of hilarious. If she was like a six seven man. If she was a 6-7, I could kind of be about this. I, I don't think this card is really going to make much sense. And like her biggest problem is she's in Bilgewater. And the idea of just like running like a big chonker in Bilgewater and fighting for the board has never really made a ton of sense. But I mean, she kind of thick. 7-6? <laughs> Yo, what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she... Okay. Wait a second. Sharp Sight. Give an ally plus 2, plus 2. And I can block elusives. So now plus one plus two. So it's just sharp sight is a plus one plus two now. And twin disciplines goes from three three to give an ally plus two or plus. So twin disciplines is now two attack or three health, basically. And sharp sight is a plus one plus two. Whoa, okay. That is kind of huge. Wait a second. That's gigantic. So, I mean, these, the, these are combat tricks that have basically been defining the metagame for a very, very long time, right? Like Sharp Sight being plus two, plus two, and freely block elusive for two mana burst has literally been a staple in Demacia decks since it got created many, many years ago. And Twin Discipline, since it got two mana, was like staple of Ionia and then nerfing both of these. This is huge. I think, I think that pretty much every Demacia and Ionia deck will feel it. It feels weird that this card is asymmetrical now. I think like, because they, they talked about not wanting to make it asymmetrical because the whole flavor of this card, it's like, ooh, that's attack or health and it's like a balance, you know? And the devs have talked about how they wanted to not make this asymmetrical. Literally in other patch notes, they were like, we really don't want to split this into plus two, plus three, or plus three, plus two. And I think they basically got to the point where they just couldn't get it to be balanced any other way. These, these, are, these are big nerfs. These are big nerfs. Looking to enable more interactions. Well, we think that they're both great defensive answers to removal, also excellent on offense. Have a harder choice between protecting units and including tools that will end games on the spot. Sure. No, I mean, I, I think I agree with that. We looked at a number of options to keep twin disciplines symmetrical, but making them fraternal twin disciplines was ultimately what we felt the most fair. <laughs> this is actually a pretty big patch. Like this is this is potentially changing quite a bit. All right. King Jarvan the third goes to five attack. <laughs> Wait a second. Okay, plus two attack on this is actually not bad. This is actually like, this feels like a unit now. That's honestly not, because like it had tough and it comes out at what, like it's Demacia, so the body is actually relevant. This is, this is actually not bad. I don't know if Jarvin's going to be in the position you want him to be. Like, I feel like there's going to be better options, but out of all the stat buffs, I, I I know numerical stat buffs don't usually do much, but plus two attack on King Jarvan, this is definitely a unit that felt like it, it was really held back by the fact that it didn't have an actual body, right? All right, Tattered Banner, effect is no longer consumed by units that already have Challenger. Oh, so that's, it's it's almost like a, yeah, it's it's almost, this is like a quality of life change. It, it doesn't really change anything. It just like, it was almost a like a, a bug. It was just a little interaction where, yeah, you, you would play something that had Challenger and this effect would get consumed by it, I guess. All right, sure. Sacred Protector goes from when I'm summoned, draw Shen, allies with barrier have double attack, to on play, give an ally barrier and draw Shen, allies with barrier have double attack. So basically, it just, the new Sacred Protector just gives barrier when you play it. Um, that's the only difference. And it's no longer a summon effect, it's a play effect now. Well, of course it has to be because it has a target, right? That's nice. I mean, honestly, like giving a barrier when you're playing a unit is actually a pretty big deal. I think like people underrate how big of a deal that is. I don't think I mean, Shen and Sacred Protector are a little too held back to really do anything with this. Like, I don't think this is really going to see play, but it's definitely a much more solid card, right? Like if you're running a Shen deck, it gives double attack on play. Yeah, of course, because the barrier will will give that double attack for that turn. It, it's definitely better defensively now. I think Shen, Shen decks kind of had a, a few of their own problems, though. All right, Sigil of Malice goes to three cost, and now its reputation will cost one. Yeah, so it, it's still reputation discount too. So it's, okay, this is kind of how Sigil of Malice probably should have been this entire time, right? Like, it always felt really weird that it was four cost, and it was like a super conditional Mystic Shot at best. Now it's kind of like, it costs one more than a Mystic Shot, and then if you enable reputation, it can kind of be super cheap. 
Um, I don't know if this is going to see play in terms of like what decks are able to be competitive right now. This is nice. I will say like this, this is a good change. Th this card, if you were like running stuff like LeBlanc, this definitely will feel a lot better. Tribeam. Honestly, <laughs> I mean, Tribeam Noxus has been a thing in the past. Yeah, true. Calculated creations goes from creative gearhead, ballistic bot on Android to gearhead, ballistic bot on it and granted plus one, plus one. So it basically just gives the free plus one, plus one instead of just giving a useless one. Huh? That's interesting. And it, it's, it's the created one. I don't know if this is going to see play. I mean, like I said, Victor got buffed above, which matters. Um, I will say if this card does see play now, I think it, it's, it has to entirely be on the, on the back of Neandroid. I think like, okay, so, okay, hear me out on this. I think Neandroid Elusives is not bad. It's, you know, it, I'm, I, I know I'm, I'm kind of the elusive guy and I, I'm, I'm always, I, I always have the elusive Hopium, but unironically, like giving this free plus one plus one, it's a created card, so it triggers all your other Neandroids. I could, I could actually try messing around with like a Neandroid Victor Elusive deck. That's honestly not bad. Flash Bomb Trap. Cards that previously planted flash bomb traps in the top 10 cards now plant them in the top eight. This affects Caitlyn, Sting Officer, Advanced Intel, Justice Rider, House Wump, Piltover Peacemaker, and various powers in Path of Champions. Okay. Yeah. Um, sure. No, this is a good change. I'm happy with this. Top eight feels definitely better for this. I think this this is a decent buff. Honestly, I, I think this is a bigger buff than it will probably seem to people at first. Like the math on this, when you plant them in top eight instead of top 10. That is, I think, the, the, that's a big change. That's a big change. Because most of when, like, when, when you put it on the ninth or the 10th card from the top, those two, um, you know, which is a 20% chance, right? Because it's two out of 10. What, what, when the flash bomb traps go there, it's like almost completely useless, right? And you've just eliminated that like 20% whiff case on all of these cards. That's kind of a big deal. Like, Caitlyn and the other cards will actually feel a lot better after this, I think. Better than it probably seems, because, like, the numbers 10 going to 8 probably doesn't seem like a ton. But, yeah, that's th th this is going to be very noticeable. I'm down with that. Careful preparation goes to 2 cost. All right, careful preparation. Are, are we actually going to run this now? Place a card from hand into your deck and then predicting creates an exact... I mean, it's 2 cost now. This card actually... Zillion go hard or something. This card actually might be all right. I'm still skeptical of this one, but minus one cost on a card like this is definitely huge. Like it's a lot better than it was before at the very least. They can copy champs too. Yeah, it does a lot of things that Stalking Shadows can't do. And being two man is great. This one I'll, I'll have to think about. Cam for the profit or cam for the doubt. Why did I say profit? Cam for the doubt. Okay, so it gets plus one, plus one, and it gets changed from when I'm summoned, if you target allies six plus times this game, grant me a spell shield over one challenger, to when I'm summoned, if you've targeted allies in four rounds. Okay, so it's, it has to target allies in four different rounds, basically, instead of targeting allies six times. So it's like Pantheon's level up requirement. You just have to do it in the rounds. So yeah, you're supposed to run this in like Pantheon decks. And if you play it and you've targeted allies in four, it's like a mini Pantheon kind of. Um, it's got good stats, right? So like it'll it'll come out, you know, on turn six in a lot of cases, you'll just be able to slam this and it'll be a six mana, six five with spell shield overwhelm and challenger. And all of those will be grants, all of those will be permanent. That's that's kind of that's kind of noticeable. And that is uh <laughs> that's the end of, that's the end of the patch notes. So no Yordles and Arms changes. Ooh. Oh no. Oh god. Wait, 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 wait. Is it uh do we do we miss any? Uh, uh, wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. No yurtles and arms. No tree changes. Hmm. I mean, you know, the okay. Well, uh, yurtles and arms does get pretty nerfed by um, loping telescope. I think this is definitely a noticeable nerf for yurtles and arms deck. Like, it will actually be sometimes harder to enable it off of this. And of course, Nar comes down plus one attack. But don't get me wrong, yurtles and arms is still looking like it'll probably be the the big the big daddy of the meta still for sure like yordles and arms is really good they mentioned it at the top oh did they oh yeah yeah here we go there's a few cards not being updated yet and we want to provide some extra context on we work uh, yeah i skipped this earlier 
we worked on these patches several weeks in advance we worked on this one earlier wasn't seeing nearly that much play we're watching it now new removal cards are being added along with other changes this patch should have an effect on yordles and arms efficacy yikes oh man oh this is painful that's a that's a big miss for sure like i think i think that th this one should have been pretty easy to put in yordles and arms is still going to be super meta dominant and still going to cause a lot of problems that being said th there's stuff to mess around with and the battle tree changes plan for the battle tree to alleviate lack of interactivity in his win condition changes are more complex to implement so we have targeted for our next balance patch i mean yeah i don't know it's that's definitely disappointing for sure like that's 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 a big miss for me i think i mean for a lot of these buffs i do like a lot of the changes here you know like aphelios is gonna be good like aphelios is gonna be kind of nuts and I honestly, I'm going to be honest. I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like Aphelios is going to come back. I mean, I'm, I don't know. Maybe Yordles and Arms will just smash Aphelios decks. I'm not sure. But Aphelios will definitely be decent. Maybe Aphelios Victor. Like, Victor might actually be a good card for the first, like, in, like, he's seen play before, but he might actually be a good card for the first time in a long time. I unironically think, I mean, if Aphelios is good and Aphelios likes PNZ anyway, I think Victor's change is going to be great. Like, that seems good um shrima's kind of getting like almost a new identity like shrima's feels like they're changing a lot because they're getting quicksand which changes a lot of how shrima can work as a region like that's really cool i'm big on that and some of the other combat tricks are getting worse which kind of opens up a little bit more um so that's cool and you know careful preparation maybe this card will be cute and you know, dual is is okay. Azira got a bit buffed. So I, I could see people messing around with some Shreema stuff. Um, and I do actually think this rumble change is pretty cool. I think there's a lot of things we can do with, uh, you know, the Mecha Yordles. I actually think Mecha Yordles aren't going to be bad. But like, I mean, for, for like, it, it, it is kind of sad because while I think there's a lot of cool changes here, and don't get me wrong, a lot of these changes aren't really going to do anything. Like, I think a lot of the changes, yeah, cards like Sacred Protector aren't really going to make sense even with a change like this for a lot of these changes it feels like you know i mean Bandle city is still going to be very good you know i'm happy about nar getting minus one attack still going to be good and yordles and arms completely unchanged just feels like a big miss that's going to go on to dominate the meta still you know there's i don't think that the top decks are really going to come down in a major way you know it it, it feels it feels like there's there's still just a little bit that's gonna keep some stuff out of the meta i mean overall it's it's it's, it's nice like I, I i like that a lot of buffs to smaller things are happening but it feels like they they could have slipped in some nerfs to some of the uh some of the oppressive stuff with this right like i mean if i'm being honest what like when, when you look at a line like this you know we work on these patches several weeks in advance we worked on this one earlier than usual due to our week out you know arms wasn't seeing nearly as much play when these changes were locked but we're watching it now the new removal cards being added along with other changes this patch should have an effect on your and arms efficacy like I, I i know that when when they do these kind of patch notes um a big thing is they do lock them in weeks in advance and that's understandable and that's a limitation and maybe that's something they have to work around and that's that's very very true and it's important to realize that that's happening. And sometimes that does limit their ability to fix certain things. That being said, I, I mean, I think that this was very easy to see coming. Like Yordles on Arms has been a strong card for like a, like a dominating strong card for more than several weeks, right? It's been a very long time. And the last changes only gave it more resources. And I mean, the, the, this was this was very, very, very foreseeable. So for me personally i mean i like some of these changes but i don't think this one is a legitimate reason for you know for not nerfing yordles and arms right like i think it's kind of up to the devs to be able to see these things coming in advance that's that's kind of you know that that's the idea of like being able to look at the game critically and have expertise in like how the game is going to play out and i i think that's an important element of being able to balance out having to lock in the patches weeks in advance right there's a UX video here. I'll watch the I'll watch the UX video at the bottom. Oh. oh. <laughs> what is happening? I'm, I'm ready. I won't back down. Okay, so blockers have like this blue thing on them now. And that
Huh. So basically, it's it's like an oracle's eye before you even hover the oracle's eye. You can kind of see what's about to happen before the before the oracle's eye. And then when you hover the oracle's eye, you see even more. Sure. I mean, that's honestly it it is a it is a cool thing, you know? Like it's a it's it's a legitimately good it's a legitimately good change. I I I can't I can't disagree with that. It's great. They made I useless. Well, no, I is still useful. It's just like they made I like a final step and you, you have like a little bit of foresight into that. This is a good change, like legitimately. I mean, I will say I'm not a really big fan of where the game is currently in like a meta state. And I've talked about this a lot and, you know, uh, wh where we are at like a design situation and a lot of the decks that I've seen play, a lot of the power creep is limiting a lot of older options and ways to play. Um, and I, I think that with all these changes, I'm still going to be maybe disappointed in the meta. I mean, I'd love to be wrong about this, but I don't expect there to be a ton to do, you know, I'll mess around with some new stuff in the coming days. Cause the patch is going to be out tomorrow and you know, it'll be interesting seeing how things play out. I might be interested in messing around with like rumble, um, and some of the, some of the mecha yordles possibly like, I, I think these buffs are legitimate. I don't really dislike these changes overall, but I think that, you know, Bandal is still going to continue to be dominant. Some of the problem cards are left untouched. And I, I think overall that, you know, the, the game feels like it's, it's in a bit of a stagnant state because so many of the old archetypes just feel very, very, very outscaled and outclassed by a lot of these new things. The, the level of power creep, you know, if you were to go back and try to play decks like Ash or decks like Deep, you know, like a lot of like think about, you know, returning players. And some of you guys might have had this experience where, you know, you played Runeterra like a year or two ago and you come back and you're like, oh, yeah, no, I'll load up like a Fiora deck or an Ash deck or a Deep deck. And you just get slammed. You get slammed out by all the new like Bandle and Demacia stuff. And, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not just Bandle. There's other powerful decks, but it feels like there's a steep limitation on what you can play. There's a lot of old things that just like pretty much anything that's over a year old, less, honestly. A any deck that's over like eight months old, you pretty much just can't play anymore. Overall, you know, this, uh, I, I think it's about as good as the balance patch as we could have had. They did mention though, you know, to their credit that in the next patch, I think that will be the one in April. They are gonna, they, they said they're gonna go back and rework some of the older champions. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure how likely it is that that's gonna fix these problems because it feels like there's a, a lot of work cut out to be able to, I mean, there's so many archetypes. It would take so many changes because the game has gotten so power crapped, right? It would take so many changes. Um, but I mean, if they go back and they give some like big buffs to older champions, that could be really cool, you know? And that'll hopefully happen. I, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe that will be the next patch a month from now. We filled out the bingo sheet. So we didn't get a full line. We were we were two positions off. They forgot to do the Udyr. <laughs> they, just, they just forgot to do the Udyr buff. Type four. Oh yeah, true. If there's if there's a number four, it is it is a gin reference. Well, patch three point four. Gin confirmed. Ah, huh? ah, huh? gin reference. That's a gin reference. Wait, that means that they forgot that. Wait, that means that we were three different places off because we did technically get a gin reference. Hmm. So that means if there was a fewer above, we also would have had. We also would have had bingo. <laughs> oh man that's so sad they forgot to buff udir and fiora and they forgot to use the phrase we hear you so we don't get bingo this time guys we don't get bingo this time that's so sad oh man